This is draft data from the first few days of Midnight Hunt Draft being available on MTG Arena. The website is 17lands.com, a place where you can go to track your own data and also contribute towards this massive data set that draws some pretty interesting conclusions with the numbers. However, it can be pretty overwhelming, so in this video series, Drafting with Data, I'm going to be breaking it down for you and showing you how you can interpret the data yourself so that you can get some actionable takeaways. In this first episode, I'm going to be starting real simple and looking at the games in hand win percentage column of the data for the white commons. But in future episodes, I will go more in depth. So if you want to see more episodes, hit that thumbs up button and comment below to let me know that you enjoy this sort of content and I will be sure to make more of it. Also subscribe so you can catch that feature content and more Midnight Hunt Draft stuff. So as I said, we're going to be only looking at one particular data set today, starting simple because I do want to give you something actionable to take away from this video and kind of get an understanding that the data is not as scary as it looks. So we're only going to be looking at this column and I'll explain why I chose these uh, now. So the reason I chose to look at only the cards that are in white is because that will remove any inherent bias from the color being more powerful. So all of the white cards are going to be going from the same baseline. So it's not like I'm comparing the white cards to the blue cards and a bad white card looks better than a good blue card just because white is a better color in the set than blue because part of the way that the win rates are going to work is if a color is very good then a lot of the cards in that color are going to be very good because the even the bad cards are getting played alongside the very powerful color so that's why i focused on just one color the reason i focused on the commons is because the sample size for the commons is going to be much higher so for example a card like candle grove which has been has 13,000 data points in this sample whereas some of the rares have less than a thousand data points in the sample and so if you start looking at the lower rarity cards especially early in the format you have less data to go from so the reason i chose the games in hand win rate was because of this higher sample size the games in hand is one of the larger things that it tracks and also because it is a very like interesting thing to examine especially early in the format when it comes to evaluating cards because games in hand win rate is the measure of what the win percentage of a user is or someone who's submitting their data to 17lands.com uh some what the win rate of a user is whenever they draw that card in their opening hand or over the course of a game so it's a very interesting data point to look at also if you would like to participate with 17lands.com just head over there it's free to set up and really interesting and it's nice to contribute towards this sort of data project because it's pretty interesting one final thing caveat before i dive into some of the numbers is that the average win rate of a 17 lands user is 56.5 percent so you might be noticing wow all these numbers look very high uh, but you need to measure those from the 56.5 percent average win rate instead of a 50 percent win rate as you would if you were examining the data set of all players so without further ado let's dive on in and before I talk about how this data kind of impacts cards, there is a baseline that I want you to go from, which is before starting drafting the set, my best three commons in my evaluations were the Gavany Silversmith. It just looked like a very good rated card that was similar to other very powerful cards. I also thought that Candle Trap was quite powerful as a removal spell option. And then finally, the third card that I thought was going to be one of the top commons was the Search Party Captain because it just looks like it's a two for one attached to a body that can be cast for relatively cheap. And so those were the three cards that I I thought uh, were going to be very good before diving into the set. And it's not super important what they do uh, relative to the fact that how the data kind of influences that. And looking at these games in hand win rates, uh, none of those three cards made it into the top three. The top three were actually Lunark Veteran, Blessed Defiance, and Gavany Trapper. And then Search Party Captain came number four, Gavany Silversmith comes number five. And the Candle Trap that I thought was going to be pretty good actually comes at a below 56.5 win percentage uh, down here uh, near the middle of the pack to even towards the bottom end. So pretty interesting that the data immediately kind of throws out some of the ideas that I maybe had about what the best cards were, but that doesn't necessarily mean that those cards aren't still good or worth taking early. So I'm going to dive into how you can kind of interpret this data. So first of all, Lunark Veteran looks like it's being an absolute all-star here. It's got a 61.5% games in hand win rate, which means in the games where it is drawn uh, or in your opening hand, you have a very significant boost in your win percentage compared to that 56.5%. Uh, and instead of merely taking that as saying you have to just take Lunark Veteran and play every copy, it's interesting to think about why that might be the case. Because on its front side, the card was not something that immediately stood out to me. It could just be uh, a format context thing that can tell you about how to evaluate other cards as well. So maybe the life gain just really is relevant because the format could be more aggressive than anticipated. Another thing that's important to note is that it gets you two bodies for one card because of the disturb. So maybe having things to sacrifice is relevant. Maybe the fact that it's a human is relevant. Maybe the uh, one powered one one is nice for enabling coven 
as a mechanic. So those are the sorts of things to keep in mind when you're looking at this sort of card. But seeing such a high win percentage definitely makes me want to try out the card more and take it a little bit higher than I have been because it looks like it is really performing and really making these white decks tick. The next card on this list is also very interesting because Blessed Defiance was one of those cards that I thought was almost unplayably bad because it doesn't buff the toughness and therefore doesn't seem to do much as a combat trick and yet in the games where it is played uh it had or drawn it has a very high impact it looks like it gives you a pretty decent boost in your win percentage now with this card i think it's really interesting to see that the game's uh, sample size is much lower it's like almost one-fifth the size of the lunark veteran and even smaller when compared to some of these other more played cards which have like fourteen thousand data points the blessed defiance has a much lower sample size which could mean several things which is why you can't just take the numbers and just go based on that and have a computer draft for you you have to actually think about what these numbers could mean and this number being smaller could mean several things first of all it could mean that it has a very narrow home, but it's very good in that home. So if Blessed Defiance only gets played in white-black decks, and it's very good in white-black decks, and people only play it there, it could have an inflated win rate for that, but it's not as flexible of a card, so still wouldn't be worth taking early, potentially. Another thing this could indicate is that only very skilled drafters are taking the Blessed Defiance, which means that because they're skilled drafters, their decks are naturally going to have a higher win percentage. So even if Blessed Defiance is a medium card in their deck, the fact that they are a player of high skill level is going to naturally raise the win percentage of Blessed Defiance. And similarly, in that vein, maybe it means that if the card is uh, being played by these skilled players, they know the exact situation where it's going to be good, and so they're only playing the card when it's at its peak performance. So the the mere number of looking at games in hand win rate is not enough to just say blindly take the card. That's why it's important to think about why Lunar Veteran might be good, why Blessed Defiance might be good, why Gavany Trapper might be good. Because again, this card has a pretty high win percentage uh, relative to the average, almost three percentage points above average, and it does have a pretty robust sample size of ten, om, almost 11,000 games. And so Gavany Trapper really doing some nice stuff. Maybe its zero power is very relevant for Cuppin, and maybe White just needs access to some removal spells because as we saw, the Candle Trap card is maybe not pulling its weight, and so White needs access to some interaction, and Gavany Trapper maybe fills that role pretty nicely. So these are the sorts of things to look at uh, when you are evaluating these cards. And if you look at the number of games played, the Search Party Captain, the Gavany Silversmith, uh, two of the cards that I identified as potentially the best uh, in the top three, at least, uh, have very high s sample sizes because maybe other players also identified those cards as being very good and also have been prioritizing them and playing them every time they get them. Get them. Uh, so that's just an interesting thing to look at is the way that the perception of the card maybe differs from how that card actually does. Uh, if you look all the way towards the bottom of these stats, you can see something like Thraben Exorcism has a very low sample size because it's more, mostly a sideboard card and has an abysmal win rate because players uh, who are playing it are probably less experienced because they're playing a sideboard card in the main deck, and therefore not only are, is the quality of their deck worse, similar to the argument we made on how Blessed Defiance might only be played by very good players, the Thraben Exorcism has a very low rate because maybe weaker players are playing it, and they're also main decking a card, and it's very narrow. So this is the way where you can think, sometimes in a format, the narrow effects like a naturalize might be main deckable, and by checking this sort of data, you can be like, well, that's probably not the case with Thraben Exorcism, it probably just doesn't have enough targets to be good. Um... So yeah, those are just some of the interesting way conclusions you can draw. And if you do have like some it, it cards that you're maybe interested in that have a relatively robust sample size, so like 10,000 games, 8,000 games, maybe these cards are things you, that are worth looking into as well. And when you're first starting out, keeping it very simple is nice to just eliminate potential blockers on making the data relevant. So for example, if I was comparing cards of all of the colors, it would potentially throw some biases where the if white cards were just naturally going to do better than blue cards or vice versa it could potentially look, make a bad blue card look better than a good white card or things of that nature so we're keeping it very simple today looking at this one stat but already there's some actionable takeaways maybe give blessed Def maybe i'm going to give blessed defiance a try to see where it might find a good home because it looks like it can have a good impact i'm certainly going to be prioritizing lunark veteran a little bit more so i can get more reps with that figure out why this card is performing so well and then maybe lower my estimation of the card a card like candle trap as as well that anyway that is going to do it for this first episode of drafting with data i really do hope you enjoyed it as i said at the beginning hitting that thumbs up button and commenting are great ways to let me know that you enjoy this sort of video so i'll know to make more of them in the future there is tons of different data points to examine all of the different colors all the different rarities so there's a lot to look at in this data and i'm hoping to make a lot more videos like this in the future if you do enjoy it uh 
if you want to subscribe, that's another way to make sure you catch those future episodes as well as more of my draft content. And if you uh, are interested in any of my other stuff, you can find that linked in the description down below. Anyway, uh, if you did make it all the way to the end of this video, leave hashtag taking a chance on veteran uh, because I'm going to be taking a chance on Lunark veteran and giving it an extra try and trying to play more of those cards uh, because the de that's what the data is telling me to do. Or, or you could leave hashtag data veteran because you've kind of learned from the data that veteran might be better and also the uh, the you've got a little bit of experience, so you have uh, some experience with the data now. Anyway, that is going to do it for this video. I really do hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful, and I will talk to you next time.